Sunday at Getsemani High School or a Sunday at Getsemani Garden Christian Center. It is not a normal day as usual. The day starts in the morning. Normally, people have to take breakfast first, but Sunday is usually a day for praise, a day for worship, a day for thanksgiving. at the uh, high school. Uh, it's a Sunday today, this morning. People are preparing to go to church and uh, because it's a Sunday, it's a Sabbath and it means a lot to us simply because we have good time with our God who is in heaven. We also have time with His Son Jesus Christ to interact because during the day we are, we are concentrating in our studies and every other activity but on a Sunday it's a special day because we give it to God in heaven and we have to observe it in many ways. Welcome to Get the Money Garden Christian Center. Join us for a Sunday service like no other. Let's go.
on what we are responsible for. If you are in charge of something, you lock whatever you are in charge of and you keep the key. Because if anything gets lost, you will be asked. Hello? I am sure in this school there is a store where maize is kept, where certain things are kept. And there is somebody who keeps that key. So that if maize gets lost, we ask the person who has the key. Praise the Lord. And let me begin by saying that you have the key to your life and God will ask you which doors you open with that key. On the day of judgment, it will be a time that all of us will give an account of what we did with the keys that God gave us. And those are some of the keys that I want to mention. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, you have a key to open or close your world. I want you to understand that as young as you are, there is a world ahead of you. Hello? and suffer. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I discovered that when a key is lost, breakage is inevitable. Hello? When you lose your key or the key to your locker, you will be forced to break your locker. When you lose the key to your life, hello? You will be forced to break into life. You will be forced to stay here, not because you want, but because your life is lost. You must eat and therefore you must snatch somebody something. Hello? When you lose the kids in your lives, you might reach a point where you are forced to compromise your body so that you can survive. Hello? When you lose your key, you will settle for anything because you don't have options. One day I met a young man who was excited and he was complaining that I am lost. And then I asked him, why do you want to be around? And he said, whenever you come around, you always give me something. Then I asked him, okay, how much do you want today? He said, don't feel bad. I want to ask for just please 50 shillings. You know, according to him, 50 shillings was a lot of money. That is a sign of somebody who lost the keys of his life. And the way he is living, he is living, you know, he's just living because he is breathing. Hello? But I want to say that for us who are alive, and for you who is in school, I want to tell you that you have a chance to use the keys that God has put before you to better your life. Hello? To open doors. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. There are institutions when you go to, they ask you for your ID, like where I work. When you pass the gate, you must have your staff ID. Anybody who does not have the staff ID, you will be subject to a security check. So, the key, my staff ID is my key in certain places. Hello? My ATM card is my key to my bank account. In other words, there are keys that we can use to open certain things in our lives. Before we continue much, I want you to note the following. Anything left in the open is of no value. Anything left in the open usually is of no value. Hello? Anything that imposes itself on you is most likely of no value. Somebody wants to force themselves on you. Somebody wants to unnecessarily engage with you. It's most likely of no value. And did you know that anything that costs you nothing is likely to be of no value? Hello? A story is told of a young man. It was online. His father bought him a very expensive car. He crashed it within one month. Because he never spent money to buy it. Then the father bought him a cheaper car. It was a BMW sports car. He crashed 
it within another two months. And the father told him, I have bought you two cars that are very expensive. I will not buy you a car again. So the young man saved money, and the money he managed to save in three years could buy an old car, very old second or third hand car. And as the story goes, for four years, there was not even a scratch on that car. <laughs> Why was it there a scratch? Because that car cost him money. His money. Are you listening to me? Yes. And so sometimes we need to be cautious with free things because sometimes when it is free, you don't feel like, like protecting it. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. And so let me share with you the following keys very quickly. Number one key that God gave you is called the key to decide. Praise the Lord. The key to decide. What you see today is the result of decisions that were made yesterday. The trees you see today were planted by somebody some years back. Hello? Praise the name of Jesus. The food you see on the table today is a result of what somebody bought yesterday or planted yesterday or planned to have yesterday. Listen to me. In life, one of the greatest things that God has given us is the power to make a choice. No wonder he says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. It's, he was saying that you must reach a point of making a decision. Hello? The young man was given the portion that belonged to him. And the Bible says he traveled to a far country and spent his money in prodigal living. He squandered the money. He used the money very carelessly. Are you listening to me? And when there is a farmer, I want to tell you that life becomes very difficult. And if you did not know, every individual passes through a wilderness in their lives. Everybody passes through a season where even money may not help, a season where even people cannot help, a season where the only person who can sort you out is God and your decision. Hallelujah. The young man went to stay in another rich man, and this rich man was feeding swine. And the man sent him to the swine so that he might look after the pigs. And the Bible says he would love. From the porch that were left, or that the pigs had eaten and left. And he asked himself one question and he said, Why should I perish yet in my father's house, even servants have enough to eat and even some to spare? Hello? And I, I like verse 17. The Bible says that he came to himself. Hello? Sometimes in life it is important to come to yourself. It's important to come to yourself. Hello? It's important to come to yourself and have a meeting with yourself and reason with yourself. It is important for you to speak to yourself. Apart from we who speak to you, it is important for you to reach somewhere and speak to yourself and ask yourself, where in reality is my life going? Is my life improving or deteriorating? What am I doing with the opportunities that are around me? In my house, in my home, I try to add value to people around me. So those who come to work in my house, 
There are some I take back to school so that they can further themselves. Others I, I give them opportunities for some training so that they can, you know, get busy. And there's one, I paid for her 52000 in a beauty college. That was not part of her salary. She was training as a beautician. Then after three weeks, I had paid the fees. She came with her bag and says, I'm going to take her. And we were like, what? And we discovered later she had got a young man who decided to marry her. And, oh, and so she was thinking that marriage is running away. She could not even go to finish her college. I paid all the money. So she lost that chance. Right now she's just wondering, doing nothing. Of course, now she already has a baby. She lost that chance. Listen to me, it is important for us to be very careful about the decisions we make. God created us, and I told you, one of the greatest things God gave us was to make a decision. In Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 24, the Bible says that Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, but chose rather to suffer affliction with the children of God. Listen to me, we need a life. Hallelujah, you know that. But they don't do anything. I don't like that category. 